Let's turn back to the New York City mayor, mayoral primaries, where former police captain Eric Adams is leading the way in the Democratic race. But with New York City using a ranked choice voting system for the first time, will his lead hold up? Joining us now, co-CEO and founder of the data and analytics company, Applecart, Sasha Samaton. Sasha, great to have you with us this morning. And we need you here to walk us through what exactly happened last night and what happens from here. First of all, you were just telling us turnout exceeded expectations. Some people were worried that not many people were going to show up at the polls yesterday, but a big number. That's correct. It looks like turnout's going to be several hundred thousand votes higher than it was in 2013, which was the last open seat mayoral race where Bill de Blasio was chosen in the Democratic primary. It's actually going to be the highest turnout since uh, 1989 when David Dinkins beat Ed Koch in the Democratic primary. So you've got Adams at 32 percent, Wiley at 22, so a 10 percent spread there. Catherine Garcia close behind Maya Wiley at about 20 percent. What happens from here? Is there enough vote out there once you start reshuffling the deck through this ranked choice system to get either Maya Wiley or Catherine Garcia up ahead of Eric Adams? So the first thing that has to happen is we have to get absentee ballots back in. So about 80,000 have already been returned, but 220,000 were requested, and there are another several days before they're due. Uh, so until they're due and they're counted in terms of first choice votes, they won't be able to begin the tabulation for second choice and third choice and fourth choice votes. But that's what will happen next. So let's pretend this is the remedial class. How does this work now in ranked choice voting? We've got these this top three. What's the next step here? How do they reshuffle these votes? Sure. So the way it works is if no candidate gets above 50 percent, which is obviously the case here, uh, they will take the candidate who received the fewest first choice votes and they will eliminate them. And then they will reallocate that candidate's votes to whoever those voters chose second. And they will sort of rinse and repeat and do this over and over and over again until either one candidate gets above 50% plus one, or there are only two candidates left, and obviously one will have more than the other. See, Joe, there's nothing to it. So based, uh, based on the trends, based on uh, what we know so far, is there any way to project out where the second ranked voting is going to go? Does it look like uh, most likely? I mean, I saw that Adams won every borough except Manhattan, which really... Uh, it really has to be good for him in the long run. But is there any reason to believe that we're going to be surprised by the turnout once the second ranked voting comes in? So it, it's possible that second and third choice could switch place. Uh, it, it, it's eminently possible that it may end up being Garcia and Adams as the final two, as opposed to Wiley and Adams, which is what it looks like mm. right now. Uh, but it, it seems highly unlikely at this point that Adams' lead is going to get shrunk enough that there are enough votes outstanding to ultimately flip it to one of the other candidates. But it's not impossible. So, Sasha, when is the next time that New Yorkers will vote? So there, there will be a general election in November. Uh, however, that general election will be between a Democrat and a Republican in a city that is six to one Democrat to Republican. So it's pretty unlikely to go for anyone except the Democrat. Yeah, except, I mean, the Republican, he does wear a beret. Yeah. I mean, that shakes things up, yeah. man. Uh, so, so um, I'm sorry, forgive my ignorance, but I love showing it on the air. Uh, so, so, after they do the ranked voting, they, do we have one versus two to get to 50%, or is it just whoever wins? Uh, this second round? That's actually a really good question, Joe. Uh, it's whoever Thank you for wins. making my ignorant question uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, seem, no, no, seem insightful. It's a very fair question. Uh, actually, so you can rank up to five people on your ballot, uh, but you don't have to rank five. And so there will be mm -hmm. some number of voters whose ballots effectively are thrown out once however many candidates they rank are, are finished if, if they don't rank one of the final two. Um, so when it gets down to the final two candidates, it's really just who has the highest number of votes. It doesn't have to be 50% plus so, one. Sasha, for people who are just catching up to this system, what are the advantages of this ranked choice system? Why was, I mean, it was a referendum item, obviously, so the voters of New York decided they wanted it. But what is the advantage of this for people who like it better? Uh, also a good question. So uh, you know, among proponents of this system, People think that this creates more consensus in politics. And, and in a lot of ways, it actually did, and that was borne out by this campaign. So one of the uh, suggestions is that ranked choice voting will limit negative campaigning. Because when you want to get another candidate's second choice votes, 
you obviously have much less of an incentive to be seen as someone who's constantly throwing left hooks and right hooks you know, on a debate stage or via your television ads. And that's actually something we saw in the campaign. Very few of the candidates actually spent any money at all uh, mm -hmm. in terms of financial resources on negative communications. Andrew Yang actually, I believe, was the only candidate to go negative against another candidate. Um, and you know, he went from leading the polls for most of the race to ultimately uh, you know, conceding last night. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, Joe, uh, Andrew Yang and Catherine Garcia formed kind of an 11th hour alliance asking voters right. to vote for them in some order, one or two. Yeah, that never works. Um, so anyway, um, this is interesting. Uh, Sasha, let's talk about national implications because we've obviously all been looking at the Republican Party for good reason because of a chunk of them are trying to like destroy uh, the Constitutional Republic. Just that. Uh, just, yeah, so we have a good reason. I'm going to give us a break for focusing on like an element of the Republican Party. I think really, though, the long-term implications of 2020 and New York's race last night is going to be with us for a while. And that is because we have a Democratic Party that is much more moderate to, I will even say, slash conservative than most of us think. You look at Biden, the fact that, I mean, if you read Twitter, if you looked at social media, you would have thought Biden was going to finish 12th in the Democratic primary. He went to South Carolina and black women said, no, wait, just hold on. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and vote. You guys sip your, your lattes and we're going to get involved in the process now. You look at New York City, the same thing. You have people chanting with slogans. Uh, I think it's a lot like what David Shore said. There are white progressives that are far more progressive, some would say extreme, on issues that even Hispanic voters and black voters. I think that bore itself out in New York City last night, bore itself out in the Democratic primary. I think there are national implications of this. I could be wrong, though. What do you think? I think that's absolutely right. I think uh, you know, if Adams or Garcia wins, uh, it, it will be off of a coalition that looks a lot like the Biden coalition, a coalition of pragmatic folks, uh, voters of color, uh, and a variety of different communities sort of stitched together behind a competent candidate running on experience. Uh, I, I also think you, know, you see some of the implications already in the top line results that are available based off of last night. You know, look at the Bronx, look at Queens. Mm -hmm. Eric Adams dominated in the outer boroughs, including, for example, in Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's congressional districts. Now, congressional That's races fair. are not ranked choice voting. Uh, if there was a congressional race last night, which there obviously wasn't, uh, in that district, the former Republican, uh, former police officer who plans to carry his service revolver to the mayor's mansion uh, mm -hmm. would have been the, the leading candidate in the Democratic primary. Yeah. Wow. That's that's big news. All right. Thank you so much, Sasha. We greatly appreciate it. A Thanks, lot to Sasha. think about here.